Hi, I'm Joanne Conroy, and I'm here today to share with you some very exciting news about our health system. Three years ago, we embarked on a journey to reflect on who we are and what we stand for. It was also a perfect opportunity to rebrand our academic health system. Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health has a new name and a new look, one that reflects the significant growth and interdependence of our health system and sets the stage for our future. Today, we are Dartmouth Health. At its core, the Dartmouth Health brand is all about you, our colleagues across the health system. The Dartmouth Health brand celebrates our human capital, the people of Dartmouth Health, and the clinical excellence and spirit of innovation that have been the hallmarks of our tireless drive to provide the highest quality care to the people of our region each and every day. You make everything we do possible. Now spring is here and hopefully the darkest days of the pandemic are behind us. We see this season of renewal and hope as a time to unveil the Dartmouth Health brand. We want our patients, our communities, and the broader medical community to know that no matter where they connect with the Dartmouth Health System, they'll have access to the full power and resources of New Hampshire's only academic health system, right here, close to home, with people they know and trust, neighbors caring for neighbors. There's something powerful woven into the fabric of our corner of the world. A certain character, etched in granite. It's felt in our towns and our cities. It's a sense of belonging, of togetherness. A sense that we count on ourselves so that everyone may count on us. These roots of interconnection are what give our health system its strength. Across our region, every one of our hospitals, our clinics, and our practice groups reflect the same world-class standards. The leading comprehensive cancer center in Northern New England, the area's foremost acute rehabilitation center, a nationally recognized center for cardiac care, the only dedicated children's hospital in New Hampshire, outstanding home health and hospice services, and the academic foundation of the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth. Together, we're driving research technology, groundbreaking clinical trials, and care advancement. Together, we're rising to meet the needs of the unique families and patients who inspire us and the moments that challenge all of us. We're making good on a promise of excellence everywhere we work, and it's thanks to all of us. Every healthcare worker, playing every role there is to play, showing up for every shift, punching in at every department with skill, with dignity, with effort. It all adds up to a standard of world-class care every day, right here at home. With local engagement, with a personal attention to our patients, with the energy, warmth, and compassion of neighbors, that's the peace of mind woven into our purpose. Whenever and wherever our community needs us, we're here for each other. Dartmouth Health, the best where it matters most. We're gathered here at the Milliard Museum in Manchester. This is a place filled with reminders of our rich history as a community. The textile mill that once stood on this site along the Merrimack River was, in its day, the largest cotton textile plant in the world. It is symbolic of the idea behind our new brand, world-class care woven into the fabric of our communities across New Hampshire and Vermont. By each of our individual members working together, we are stronger. The new Dartmouth Health brand brings us to the present and positions us strategically for the future. It will allow us to share the strengths and benefits of our growing integrated system in this dynamic healthcare environment. 
and will help to deepen our historically strong relationship with the Geisel School of Medicine at Dartmouth and our collaborative partnership with Dartmouth. Joining me now are my fellow leaders from across Dartmouth Health. Sue Mooney, President and CEO of Alice Peck Day Memorial Hospital. Don Caruso, CEO and President of Cheshire Medical Center. Maria Padin, Chief Medical Officer of the Dartmouth Health Clinics in our Southern Region. Joe Paris, CEO and Chief Medical Officer of Mount Escutney Hospital and Health Center. Tom Mannion, President and CEO of New London Hospital. And Johanna Bellavo, President and CEO of Visiting Nurse and Hospice for Vermont and New Hampshire. So I'll start with Sue. What does this mean for your employees, Sue? I think the, the biggest benefit to being part of the system for our employees is the access to education and training and career advancement opportunities that we just could not provide people when we were independent and on our own. And since we joined the system in 2016, we've just had a tremendous amount of growth uh, for our employees, and they really appreciate it. Joe, how about being in Vermont? You're our one Vermont facility. Um, how does this translate for your employees? Um, you know, what, what has been most gratifying, I think, has been the, the length of our time in the system at this point. You know, we, we finalized our affiliation in 2014. So our staff has had the benefit of seeing what that relationship or how that relationship has evolved uh, over the last seven years or so. Um, they get to see, to be really granular, you know, they know that when the Dartmouth-Hitchcock simulation van uh, is is parked out front that there's going to be a focus on on medical education, uh, so I, I think it's really the, the the best part of being a system member um, is tapping into subject matter experts, uh, whether it be clinical, financial, pharmacologic, uh, kind of you name it. And that expert might not be at Dartmouth Hitchcock; it might be in Cheshire. Um, if I have questions regarding home care, I'll I'll reach out to Johanna. Um, patients bouncing around the system, maybe starting in Manchester, going to Dartmouth-Hitchcock, ending up in our rehab unit. It's uh, um, seeing that kind of flow and benefit for patients, I think, is most gratifying for our staff. Now, how about you, Tom? So I think uh, one example that comes to my mind is the amount of subject matter expertise that we now have access to. So I think about our, our for example, our pharmacy manager with uh, really esoteric things like 340B. You know, very, very complicated stuff. Having a whole team at uh, the system level to help support you know, our, our one pharmacy manager who's also trying to run a pharmacy while managing this complicated program, it's just great to have that kind of access and expertise uh, that otherwise it would have been really hard to, to build. For our team, it's been really beneficial. The piece that I'm most excited about, though, is the career pathway and the development opportunities for our team. We just, for an example, launched um, our first uh, personal care team member to uh, achieve their LNA certification through the Workforce Readiness Institute. We never would have been able to do that um, as a standalone organization. And so that's really exciting for our team to be able to look across the health system and see opportunities for themselves. So what does this mean for patients? I'll start with you, Don. In the Keene area, and for Cheshire in particular, really what it means for the patient is that they, they'll have the expertise of Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center closer to home through Cheshire Medical Center. And so they'll see the ability to be taken care of in a way that they would have had to be transferred before. Mm -hmm. And now they'll be able to stay at Cheshire Medical Center, the connectivity using telehealth, and a lot of our telemedicine capability, and then having some of the expertise locally that we haven't really had before. And even though we were tightly connected through the physician practices, having Cheshire being part of that system now allows the inpatient care to accelerate to a to much higher level than we've seen before. Whether it's in the emergency room and we see the smooth transition of care when someone comes in with chest pain, and we can rapidly now get them up to Dartmouth, or if they get admitted and they have chest pain, and, and a day later we can do basically a transfer of a patient to get a catheterization same day, and then back to Cheshire Medical Center for recovery. Those are huge changes for patients, and they can stay closer to home. Yeah, the movement of patients within a health system is a lot more seamless than when you're trying to move between health systems. You're absolutely right. Sue, now you are located probably about four miles away 
from the largest facility in the system, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center. What is this gonna mean for your patients? Yeah, we're really unique because of that co-location. And a great example is how much a collaboration and a coordination went into our response to COVID. Uh, and I think, you know, APD is not well situated to do inpatient COVID care, uh, but we were able to stand up a monoclonal antibody clinic that really benefited uh, our communities. And we, we were able to do that because we could tap into the expertise uh, and the, the subject matter experts at the academic medical center, but we had the resources to stand up and, and operate that, that clinic. So together, uh, I think we've met the full spectrum of need for our patients in our community. All right, Maria, what does it mean for your patients, which must be close to a half a million visits a year? Yes, uh, well, I think for our patients, I think one of the pieces in addition to all of the other things that our colleagues have talked about in terms of how uh, we complement each other and the breadth of services that we provide is really the connection. Um, and the differentiator for us and for our patients is really the access to being affiliated with an academic institution and to uh, research. Um, you know, I think medicine, as we all know, and we learned during COVID, uh, is uh, rapidly evolves and the needs uh, rapidly evolve as well. And uh, being able to have the accessibility of, for example, clinical trials during COVID that may have not been accessible at other sites uh, for our patient population was really important. So I think it continues to sort of build upon uh, uh, that uh, level of necessary advancement in medicine that can only be achieved by being affiliated with an academic medical center um, and up-to-date um, innovation. So what did you learn about your organization and the health system during the pandemic, and how does that connect to the brand? I think what shone through was the strength of the teams that we each have in our organizations. No one person uh, was going to solve uh, the myriad issues that arose every single day, but our teams just, well, the phrase I heard more often than not was, we got this, you know, we can figure it out. How about you, Tom? So I was on the job for three days before COVID-19 <laughs> was declared a pandemic. Um, and what I really learned was just how much support there is from all of you and the other leaders in the system to help us, you know, stay together and, and take care of our employees and take care of our communities. Uh, it's, it's the, it was really, really amazing to be new and to have such a strong support system to make sure that we were going to take care of the things that were mission critical to, to our hospital. You're right. You never really felt alone. We didn't allow anybody to worry alone. Right. Right. How about you, Johanna? Yeah, building on that, it's the strength of our collaboration. People always came first. So whether that was the safety of our patients or the safety of our staff, um, everybody was working towards that same goal. And how about you, Don? Aside from Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, Cheshire took it on the chin um, almost as much, maybe more, for the size of the facility. I think back to the CEO meetings you ran and how we really learned to be, we could depend on each other. We were really incredibly cohesive when we needed to most, when we were really stressed, as you described. And, and so that dependency and that, that comfort of being able to say, you know what, I can depend on my partners and my, and my fellow members to actually help us get through the crisis. Yeah, the silver lining of the pandemic probably was that we developed relationships and learned to lean on each other um, as equal members across the health system because a lot of the solutions came from every different portion of the organization. So it was, it, it was a learning opportunity for all of us and we did become stronger. So we all know change is hard and we spent two years through a lot of change. The new brand gives us an opportunity to pivot to the future, but what would you tell people about how they should embrace change? I think the most important thing to remember is that it's okay to be sad about what you're letting go of and to, to experience those feelings and to talk about it. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're not willing to embrace the future and what's ahead. 
it just is honoring the legacy of the past. And so I don't, I don't think we need to pretend that, you know, it's uh, not mixed feelings for folks. I think it's totally normal and okay. Uh, but I, I'm excited about the future. I think this is the right thing to do. And uh, I think we've got a great future together. Don, Cheshire's gone through a lot of change. How would you advise your employees and the people in your community about the change? I, I would agree with you. Cheshire's gone through tremendous change. COVID drove change. But change is good. I don't look at change as a loss of anything. I look at change as, as the excitement of the future. And the things we've accomplished over the seven years I've been part of, of Cheshire Medical Center and has been part of the Dartmouth system has is, is been exciting. And there is more excitement to come because together we've, we've learned we can do some pretty amazing things that we, that we really did in COVID. We can continue to do those. If we build on those, the excitement has to be palpable to people because they, they can actually see the differences today from literally a year ago when people really were just beginning to understand what COVID meant. Mm -hmm. So to me, change is exciting and I embrace change and I would recommend people embrace it rather than look at it as a loss. Mm -hmm. How about you, Tom? This new change is going to help us uh, re reaffirm our identity and who we are and, and how we are a part of a, a larger system. We just talked about all these examples about how we've been able to support each other and, and stand each other up and really be there for one another. It's the, the movement that's the right movement for where we need to go. And I, I think, you know, to Sue's point, absolutely, I agree that there's going to be some emotion in it. But I think it's, we have to remind ourselves we still have our each organization's individual identity, but we're a part of something bigger, which is great. And that's, the, that's what we need to celebrate in the direction that we're going. Maria, how about in the Southern region with the community group practices? So, I mean, I think what I would say is that one of the strengths that we all have together is our diversity. And this change is not about um, losing who we are but really moving forward as to how we can collectively create something for the future that's greater than just our individuality, um, whether it's as a critical care access hospital, an ambulatory sort of base clinic, um, or a hospital, a major academic medical center, an acute care hospital. So I, I, I embrace it, and I would encourage people to embrace it. Um, because the only way we move towards the future is by having that flexibility of change. Um, and, uh, and again, I think it's an acknowledgement um, of that interconnectivity that we felt, and we're just calling it out. So we'll end with Joe. What do you say to your community and to your employees about embracing change? Yeah, you know, I often start the conversation with, uh, yes, change is hard change is disruptive, change is opportunity uh, as well. And it's an opportunity f uh, with our new branding to allow the system to integrate further, to give new opportunities for all of us. We'll, we'll each retain the best parts of our unique cultures at each of our institutions. Um, but, uh, you know, we talk often at the system level around where we're going to be really tight as a system, where we'll be a little bit looser on the system. And, and our, our brand should be tight. We should be tight on quality and safety. The idea that a patient that enters uh, Tom's hospital or Sue's hospital or Johanna's receiving care from Johanna's organization are all getting the same Dartmouth Health, high quality, safe care that is repeatable across the health system. So it's Change is hard, change is disruptive. It's also full of opportunity. I like the, your comment, Tom, about kind of affirming about who we are and how we're moving forward. Um, the aspect of actually being stronger together and being woven into the fabric of our communities is all part of how we're evolving into Dartmouth Health. I think as a statement to our communities in every single region where we deliver care, but it's also a statement uh, regionally and maybe even nationally about who we are. And the incredible integration of research, education, clinical expertise um, in a organization that is not fragmented and actually puts the patient in the center of our care. So thank you, all of you. 
Sue Reeves, Executive Vice President of Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, is not able to join us today, but will share her thoughts. Good afternoon. I'm Sue Reeves, Executive Vice President for Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center and Senior Nurse Executive for the Dartmouth-Hitchcock Health System. As Joanne mentioned, I could not be with my system CEO colleagues to announce our new brand, as I'm currently home in the role of DHMC patient, recovering from surgery a little over a month ago. However, I did not want to miss out on the excitement we are all feeling about this new evolution for our health system, the rollout of our new name and our new brand identity. In one way or another, I have been a part of the Dartmouth-Hitchcock organization since, as a 17-year-old, I arrived at Mary Hitchcock Memorial Hospital School of Nursing in 1977. Over these many years, I have been a witness to the hundreds of ways that we have grown and developed in response to both local and regional need for our services, as well as in response to external pressures in our industry. Of course, the more impressive examples of these changes might include our move of the Medical Center from Hanover to Lebanon in 1991, which allowed the co-location of our clinical and academic missions, the institution of the DART program in 1994, the combining of the hospital and clinic organizations into one operating entity, the establishment of our Dartmouth-Hitchcock-based research program, and of course, since 2015, the development of our academic health system. As we've come together as a health system, which as you've heard has been significantly advanced by the pandemic experience of the last few years, I think we have all been struck that despite our organizational differences, we clearly see and experience every day that we are indeed better together. We identify strongly with the communities we serve seeing ourselves as embedded into the very fabric of them. And we stand united as members of our health system in our, in our desire to deliver only the very best care to those we serve, provide the best places to work, and advance our academic missions. Simply said, as a health system, we really mesh. So in my mind, this newest step for our organization actually rides on the strength of our deep history and experience in evolving to meet the challenges of the future. I think it is very fitting that we have a new name and a new brand identity that will take us forward together into this preferred future. This afternoon, you'll receive an email from me and our System Vice President for Communications and Marketing, Jennifer Gilkey, with more information on this brand journey, including directions to our brand center, where you can find the new logo and instructions for using it, our newly designed website. You'll also be receiving a gift in the mail in the coming days, a small gesture of thanks for all you do. While the name and the logo have changed, what will never change is our ongoing commitment to provide the very best care for those who need us. We are privileged to have you both as colleagues and collaborators. Because of you, we are proud to be Dartmouth Health. This has been an inspiring, worthwhile journey, one that very publicly positions Dartmouth Health right where we know we belong. As one of the nation's premier academic health systems, one that has served our region for more than a century and is prepared to serve another century and beyond. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, and we look forward to our bright future as Dartmouth Health.